I have just arrived in Shanghai, China. I am here for a 24-hour layover and I booked a very unique hotel room. It's probably the most unique hotel room I ever stayed at. The name of the room is Secret Cave. The pictures look really, really interesting. So let's check it out and see if it's worth the $250 I'm paying for it. Okay, the problem now is the last time I arrived here in Shanghai, which was last year, it was kind of a stressful arrival process. And yeah, I don't have a visa yet. I should be able to enter visa free with a German passport, but you never know 100%. So that's gonna be the first step now to make it through immigration. And then yeah, I don't have Alipay set up this time. So I'm not connected to the online payment system here. So that could also be a bit of a problem today. And I currently also have many issues with my credit cards. I only have one working credit card with me at the moment. So if that one fails I literally can't get money here now and yeah the first step now is to actually get a train here probably over to another terminal and I remember this train from the last time I arrived here in Shanghai which was exactly the same and yeah the hotel where we are staying today is actually quite near the airport so I was looking for airport hotels or hotels that are very near the airport because I'm literally only here for 24 hours and then I found this uh, secret cave hotel room so I'm really looking forward to that and now check out the beautiful skyline of Shanghai. Probably my favorite skyline in the whole world. And yeah, I'm also really keen to eat proper Chinese food later today. It's been a while since my last visit to China. And to be honest, I miss Chinese food. So let's see if we can also find some decent food later at the hotel. But first things first, arrival, getting into the country and then finding my suitcase. And we have the foreigner fingerprint self collection area here, which is nothing unusual. The last time I filmed my arrival in China, the there were many people in the comment section complaining about, oh, why is China collecting your fingerprints? Hey, every country in Asia does this. So you scan your passport first and then you place your fingers here. They get scanned. Yeah, currently there's still the rule that German passport holders along uh, with some other countries can enter China visa free for 15 days. Actually, they just extended the period um, in which this is possible to uh, mid next year. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Visa on arrival, travel document. In theory, I could also just get the, the 144 hour transit visa because I am only here for 24 hours actually anyway. So actually I have two options. Get the 144 hour visa or just enter visa free, which is probably the easier option. All right, so here we have the, the visa, the arrival section. So here I'm not allowed to film. So hopefully see you on the other side. And I am in the country. That was actually a very smooth and easy process. Although I have to say it took a bit longer than the last time. Now I had to wait for like 15, 20 minutes, which is still absolutely okay. But the last time I arrived here, I was literally the only foreigner. So I had zero waiting time at all. So I see a difference. Seems like uh, more foreigners are arriving here in China these days. And actually I need to check the screen where my bag is. Oh, actually, there's a money exchange place here and I still have some money left from Macau where I was a few months ago. So maybe I can just change my Macau money into Chinese money and then maybe that's enough for one day. So I still have 120 Macau Pataka left. Hello, can I change Macau money? Macau? Macau, yeah. Yeah? yeah. To Chinese Yuan? I think the conversion from Macau money to Chinese Yuan is almost one to one. So I should get uh, almost 120 Yuan in return. So you give me 140 Macau. Yeah, or 140, not 120. They read 100 uh, Macau, you can get this Chinese money. 100. Can I add some Hong Kong dollar as well? Uh, yeah, Hong Kong dollar can change. I have uh, 60 Hong Kong dollar, I think. Okay, I also have uh, 60 Hong Kong dollar left. So I will add them now to get more in total. And uh, if you give me 60, and uh, this one no commission, you can get this yeah. Chinese money. Okay. Okay. okay Put down. And the passport, please. Yeah, that's why I usually avoid uh, these currency exchange uh, places, because you always lose some money because of uh, usually not the best rates. And uh, most of these places also have a commission like now. So usually I prefer to just get money from the ATM with my credit card, where the conversion rate is much better and my credit card doesn't charge me for international withdrawals. Okay, I have 135 Chinese Yuan now. That should be enough for one day. Basically all I need to pay is my dinner today. I have breakfast included in this day. And I also have 
transportation included. But more about that in a minute. First, let me actually get my bag. Okay, so included in the hotel is free airport transfer to the hotel now and then also tomorrow back to the airport. The only thing now is I need to contact them. So they wrote me when I booked the hotel yesterday, they sent me a message that I should contact them as soon as I have my luggage and then they will send their driver. The problem is I just need to contact them now. So they gave me their phone number, but I uh, can't make phone calls. I have a SIM card already, more about that uh, later as well. But this SIM card is only for mobile data, not for phone calls. But the hotel actually thought about that as well. And they told me in case you can't make phone calls, just ask the airport staff, uh, they will help you out. So let's see if I can find someone uh, who will help me out to make the phone call. Unfortunately, the hotel is not waiting for me here with a sign with my name on it. That would be very cool. But it's actually not a five-star hotel. So I'm not sure how good the service will be. The room will be very special. I'm uh, really looking forward to that. But it's actually, despite the high price of $250, not a five-star hotel today. So I would expect a five-star hotel would probably uh, pick you up here with the sign. But I'm not staying in a five-star hotel. Okay, let me actually figure out first where I have to go. So they sent me the location, some uh, pickup uh, area here. So I have internet already. So I can actually uh, check the message that they wrote me. If your phone is unable to contact, you can ask any airport staff around to give us a call. They will be happy to help. Hello, ni hao. I have a question. Uh, I need to uh, uh, contact my hotel. Can you help me to call? I need to call my hotel, but my phone cannot call. Can you help to call? Go ahead. There's a tourist service center about 200 meters away. They can help you contact your... Okay, xie Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, very helpful. I had this experience uh, many times before in China when people uh, don't speak English, which uh, happens here in China. Not everyone here speaks English, but many times they just uh, get out their phone, opening a translation app, and then they are trying to help you with the app. So he sent me over to the tourist information center. He said 200 meters over there. And yeah, I would assume that the tourist information center will be able to speak English. Ah, check it out. We have uh, several different help desks, digital payment help desk. So probably they can help you to uh, set up Alipay, public transportation, help desk, information desk. I'm not sure if this desk was here the last time I arrived in Shanghai, or maybe I just haven't seen it. Well, let's see if the information desk ladies can help here. Hi, SIM card? Hi, I don't need a SIM card, no. Can Hi. you help me to call my hotel? Oh yeah, sure. I need to call the hotel to oh, pick me up. You mean, you mean I call the hotel for you, right? That would be great, yeah. Because I cannot make a phone call with my phone. What's the, like the re reservation name? Uh, Ken. Hello. Uh, I have two. Uh, how many people? Just one. Ah, uh, there is one person who said he booked you in the hotel, and then he wants you to call the airport. So it sounds like a complicated uh, talk. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> they ask you to go to um, P2, the parking lot number yeah, that's, two. Yeah, that's right here, right? Yeah, and there's a there's a like a zoom. Zoom number is H H six. Yeah. So you you can you can tell them you are there at H six, and they will call a cab to pick you up. They will send you the the, the license plate, yeah, the plate number. Okay. Thank you so much for your help. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, turns out to be a longer process than expected. I'm not sure. She was literally talking with them for like three four minutes. What I would have guessed is an easy call. Hey, Mr. Ken is here. Please pick him up was a bit longer than that but uh, yeah should be fine so I just texted them actually that I am at the meeting point and now they will send the taxi so it looks like they're actually sending a taxi not not their own shuttle bus anyway I don't really mind who will pick me up okay meeting point H6 or actually it says H9 is this now the number to follow H9 or this one number six but yeah I see H over there so this is definitely the H area so I think this should be the right one. And yeah, while I'm waiting for my pickup, let me tell you why I don't need a SIM card. You probably know this when you arrive in a new country, one of the first things you have to do is getting a SIM card. And that can be stressful, take some time, and it's just annoying, especially if you have a long flight before. And especially here in China, I remember last year, 
I also went to buy a SIM card and I actually had to go to a proper shop in the city and then I had to register myself, I had to sign some documents. So it was quite a long process until I was actually able to get the SIM card. But yeah, now I don't need SIM cards anymore because I started to use eSIMs. And an eSIM is basically a digital SIM card that you can install to your phone even before you start the journey. So I got myself a China eSIM yesterday evening, I installed everything and then I was able to connect with the internet right away after I landed. So that is of course also really great. You are connected with the internet right away. You don't have to wait until you find a SIM card shop. And yeah, the app that I am using to get my eSIMs is called Nomad. And they have over 170 countries available in the app. It's very easy. You just choose the country, then you choose a data plan. The app tells you exactly step by step how to install everything. You can get it done in like two minutes. So I did everything yesterday evening, very easy. And if you want to check out Nomad eSIMs as well, there's a link in the description or on the pinned comment. And if you enter the promo code that you can see on the screen right now, you can get 25% off your first purchase on the app. Just use this promo code right here. And yeah, make sure that your phone actually does support eSIMs, but most phones nowadays do. Okay, update. A few minutes later, they have replied. Apparently the driver drove into the wrong entrance, so I have to go to L level. Okay, this is the L area. You can see it over there. L 17, 18. I think it's this one right here. And yeah, in case you're wondering, this is the name of the hotel, Shanghai Pudong Airport Mundo Hotel. It's even pet friendly and it has an average rating on booking.com of 8.9, which is quite high. So I think that the driver is actually just like an, like an Uber driver. She's not a part of the hotel. Oh yeah, over there, okay. That was a quick ride, maybe like 12, 15 minutes, something like that. The hotel doesn't look too special from the outside, to be honest, but I think the room will. Hello, good afternoon. I would like to check in. Is that your most special room here? Yes. It looks very, very special on the pictures. That's the only reason why I booked this place, because the pictures of the room looked so special. <laughs> why do you have such a unique room here? Just a kind of Friend. Just like to have something special. Yes. Do you to only have a different feeling? Yeah. It's only one secret cave room, or you have we several? Have three. In the three room. of them. Yes. Okay. Okay. How would you like to pay? Uh, credit card. Credit card sure. Let's hope my credit card works because I had the issue before in China that my card is not working. Do see? Oh, it's working. Yes. Whew, okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. You know what? I'm actually quite hungry, so let's get dinner first, early dinner. And after that, we're going to check out the room. So I just had a quick look on Google Maps. Uh, yeah, Google Maps is not really uh, reliable or a big help here in China. Uh, I wanted to see if I can find some restaurants nearby, but I couldn't. But I think it should be possible to just have a walk around and find something. Well, we have Burger King here, but that's definitely not where I want to end up today. I want to eat some proper and delicious Chinese food. Yeah, we are not really in Shanghai city center. This is like 15 minutes away from the airport. So we are like on the outskirts of Shanghai. So we have some uh, small town vibes here, I would say. No big city, uh, Shanghai city center vibes. Shanghai, one of the biggest cities in the world. About 26 million people are living here, but this certainly doesn't feel like that. Oh, we have a convenience store here as well, where I will maybe grab some snacks for later. But let's see, what are we having here? Looks like, uh, like beef noodles. Okay, this might be already a good option. I see many locals inside. It's definitely a good sign. Hey, I'm not sure what I really want to eat. Just something Chinese and delicious. We have Qingjiang chicken here. And braised noodles with potatoes. That sounds good, actually. And then braised beef noodles. I think I found my spot. Uh, Lanzo beef noodles. Maybe let me take a picture of this. And let me make sure that it's not spicy. Still cannot eat spicy, especially not when I'm having a flight tomorrow. I would like to eat this. This one. Yeah. One. Spicy? No? Oh, maybe this spicy. Okay, okay. I hope he was telling the kitchen, uh, please don't make it spicy. Oh, actually, check this out. 
We have some uh, some barbecue on the stick here. Oh. What is this? Uh, let me uh, translate this because it looks actually delicious. Ah, there's lamb here, kidney, and chicken wings. Oh. Can I get this one? Yeah, one. One uh, barbecue stick. Okay. Okay, yeah. One please. Okay. Okay, let's get a, a lamp meat stick as well on the side. Oh, and I got a little tea here already. Oh, as usual in China, the portions are actually quite huge. Check it out. Wow. This looks like a big and decent portion. So we have the noodles here. We have potatoes. We have uh, onions here, and then of course the beef. I just uh, asked my Chinese friend actually uh, if he knows the food, and he told me it's food from uh, Northwest China actually. So nothing uh, typical for Shanghai then, I guess. Let me take a picture for Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram yet, feel free to do so. Can abroad on Instagram. I'm posting daily stories, behind the scenes, live updates. Okay, this portion should definitely be uh, enough for me. It's huge. It's uh, often the case when you go eat in China, most of the portions are actually quite huge and you can easily eat them with two persons. Mm. Oh, you can taste, they boil the potato for quite a while. It's very soft. And yeah, where I'm from in Germany, we also eat a lot of potatoes. I would even say potatoes are more popular than noodles, definitely more popular than rice in Germany. Oh, and let me try the beef as well. Mm. Chinese braised meat is so delicious. Oh. oh, thank you so much. Okay, okay, he was bringing me uh, the lamb, the barbecue lamb. Oh, that's the flavor I was missing. Braised meat flavor from China. By the way, if you're new here, I traveled around China a few months ago. I have about 15 videos from China on my channel. So if you haven't seen my previous China videos where I traveled all around basically, feel free to check out my China playlist. And yeah, it's not spicy at all. I'm not sure if it's usually like this or if he actually told the kitchen, don't make it spicy. But this reminds me a lot about the, the barbecue lamb I ate in Xinjiang in Urumqi. Maybe this is a Qingjiang style actually, very nice. Chinese food is probably my favorite cuisine in all of Asia. And yeah, from all of the different Chinese cuisines, usually I like the Cantonese cuisine the most. And I was able to finish everything and it was super, super delicious. Okay, let's see how much I actually have to pay for this. Because I have no idea, I don't see any prices here. I want to pay? Yeah. Two. Ah, 27. Okay. Okay, sure, sure. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was very uh, hautsche, delicious. Hautsche. Very good. Thank you so much. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, I feel happy. You know this feeling when you just had a really good meal, you feel uh, properly filled. Oh, great feeling. But yeah, now let's check out the room. That's what we are here for, right? So we're going into a cave now, but the cave is not somewhere on the lower floor, it's actually on the second floor. So I'm actually curious how they, um, how they built the room. Yeah, so they not only have the cave room here, they also have regular rooms here, which are way cheaper. Actually, I think the cheapest room here was about 80 or 90 dollar. So less than half of what I'm paying now. So you obviously pay for the, for the unique room here, definitely. Here we are. Okay, are you ready for the secret cave room? Okay, first of all, oh, wow. Let me make proper light for you guys. Okay. Oh, this looks special. Wow. Oh, oh. Wow. Have a look at this, guys. Whew. First impression, I'm wondering how they built this. What is this material here? Actually, it seems to be pretty solid. But first, I think I need to make a bit more proper lighting. Okay, unfortunately, I can't make more light. This is the maximum amount of light we have in here. But let's explore the room. So you come in here and then the first thing you see is a tree. Actually, a fake tree, of course, but it looks pretty solid. 
and uh, adds a great atmosphere to the room, right? So you really have the feeling you're somewhere in a cave right away. And then, yeah, we have the double bed right here, which they actually decorated quite nice. Pretty romantic with uh, some hearts here and then the swans, so nice bed. And then what is really cool here is we have like cave murals all around the room. So you actually really feel like you are in like a 2000 years old cave here. So these murals that you can see all around here, they actually look pretty, pretty cool. And then there's a TV here as well, in case you want to watch TV. And then we have a swing here, which also looks quite cozy. Unfortunately, the sign here says maximum weigh 50 kilo, which uh, I'm a bit above that. So I'm not sure, actually, I want to try it out. I'm not going to uh, put my full weight on it now. Okay, maybe I'm not going to try that. <laughs> okay, but then we have a bathtub here, which looks pretty cool. It's right underneath the only window, which is up there. So what do we have here? We have probably a tourism one-time bath bag. Okay, some uh, also like, uh, like salt here, like bathing salt, I guess. Okay, and then we have a mini bar here. Let's see if there's something inside. No, nothing inside, just an empty fridge. But we do have uh, water here and coffee, espresso and tea. And then there's also a bottle of wine here, which I would assume if you're paying $250 a night, this is going to be included. Then there's a little box here. What's inside the box? <laughs> oh, wow. This is funny. There's a costume in here. So you can dress like a, like a caveman or a cave girl. <laughs> That's funny. Should I put on the, the costume? Maybe not. <laughs> and then we have a little drum here and uh, some chocolate. Also lovely. Looking forward to try that. And then the view to the room is just like this. Very, very cozy, very special, very unique. And then here in the back, we have the bathroom which is like an open area like this. So the sink is here, we have soap, we have uh, two little towels that we have in here. Probably a soap, uh, a mask, and then we have a big towels down here and middle-sized towels here, a hairdryer. Here's an area where you can leave your suitcase. And then we have the toilet right here. Nothing too special about the toilet. And then the shower is right here. Looks like this, okay. And yeah, look at the design here as well. This is so nicely done. So many little details here and there. And yeah, this, it's not proper stone, I guess, but actually it feels pretty, pretty proper and solid. So this is not like, like cheap plastic or anything. If you bump your head here, that would uh, really hurt a lot, I guess. Okay, anything else here that we haven't explored? Actually, I want to try the chocolate. Let's try the chocolate right away. Maybe this uh, chair here is comfortable. Oh, yes it is. Mm. Oh, the chocolate is actually very good. Oh. Okay, fast forward a few hours and I am in bed now. I just did my laundry actually. They have the option to do free laundry here, so that was pretty cool. And yeah, I have to say the atmosphere here now is actually very, very cozy. I really like it. It really feels like staying in a cave and not a regular hotel room, definitely not. So I'm going to rest now and then tomorrow morning we are going to check out the breakfast that is included in this day. And then I will give you my final review. So uh, good night guys and see you tomorrow morning. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> that looks really good. Shishi. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, we got some uh, freshly made wonton soup here for breakfast. Ah, spoon here. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I think there's shrimp in here. Tastes really good. And yeah, the auntie just made it fresh over there. And yeah, there's not only wonton soup available here, there's also a big buffet with plenty, plenty of options. So everything I need to start the day. Uh, how -cha. How -cha. Very good. Oh, okay. Very delicious, yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I just want to mention that yes, I will leave China again in a few hours, but my next videos will actually be about China as well. I'm starting a series which is 
not in China, but it's related to China. We are going to visit different places in different countries in Southeast Asia, and it will be related to China. That's all I want to say for now, so stay tuned for the next videos. Okay, I'm doing the final review now here in the bathtub. Uh, first of all, the sleep here was amazing. The room is super, super quiet, and I am a very light sleeper, so if there's a noisy main road in front of my window or a noisy aircon unit, that's already quite annoying to me. And here, there were absolutely zero noise so the sleep was very very good to be honest I feel that I am not 20 anymore so if I don't have a proper rest I really feel that in the morning now that I'm over 30 that was definitely different 10 years ago but here I feel very well rested I didn't wake up once in the night so that is actually pretty great and then yeah how would I rate my overall stay here so first of all I have to say it feels a bit weird to pay $250 and not stay in a luxurious five-star hotel you saw me here on the channel doing a hotel review before where I spent less money and stayed in like fancy luxurious five-star hotels all around Southeast Asia and also here in East Asia it's definitely possible to get luxury five-star hotels for less than $200 where you get uh, top amenities a nice pool awesome service nice restaurants attached to the hotel and all of that you don't have here so you're paying $250 and you're not staying in a five-star luxury hotel but you're paying for staying in such a unique room and that was definitely the case. It was probably the most unique hotel room I ever stayed in. The room here is really well designed, so many little details. You can really see that they yeah, wanted to make something special here and I think they did a really good job with that. So overall, I would say, is it worth $250? Um, for one night, yes, I wouldn't stay here for more than one night. Imagine if you stay here for four nights and then you pay a thousand dollar, that's not worth it, I think. But for one night, it was a cool experience. And I also love that it's so close to the airport. It's like 10, 15 minutes from here to the airport. So I'm heading back uh, to the airport after I check out. Very easy, very convenient for a layover. And like I said earlier, they also have normal rooms here for less than half the price. If you want to check out this hotel as well, I will leave a link where I booked it in the description. And if you haven't seen my previous video where I was still in South Korea, on the biggest island there then feel free to check out the video right here stay healthy stay positive and then see you on the next episode ciao guys